What's going on, everybody? This is your boy Mitch of Mitchpiration. If it's your first time coming to my channel, my channel is all about life, manhood, motivation, and spiritual development. And if you're back for the numerous time, you already know the slogan. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. Today is the first episode of one of my new segments I shared with y'all a few episodes back called Just My Thoughts. What is Just My Thoughts? Glad you asked. Just my thoughts are simple, man. It's my opportunity to sit on my soapbox. Um, there's a lot of different things going on in the world, entertainment industry, society. And a lot of these things are already talked about super, super heavy. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this. But I want to talk today about the sensation that has been Love is Blind. Love is Blind is a show on Netflix hosted by Nick Lachey of 98 Degrees. If you remember back in like the early 2000s when the whole boy band craze hit, he was a lead singer of a guy group called 98 Degrees. Um, but basically, Love is Blind is a show that tries to have males who are selected and women who are selected to come together um, and they live in separate spaces, but they meet in what they call the pods. The pods is basically one room that's split down the middle with a wall where the man can't see the woman, the woman can't see the man, but they can hear each other's voices. So it's basically creating this premise of actually this idea of can you fall in love with somebody without actually seeing their physical appearance to know whether they're attractive and all those things. Because sometimes the physical can be a little superficial, but I also understand being attracted to the person that you're with. So the person I want to talk about today is somebody who everybody's spoken about on social media. Um, I just kind of want to talk about him in a different light because I kind of rock with bro. Um, his name is Clay. Um, this season of Love is Blind, season six actually, was in Charlotte. And one thing that really stuck out to me about Clay is that he has this desire to find love and fall in love and be married, but he has a very, um, he has a very tricky background. Um, and I say that because throughout the show, he kind of talks about um, growing up with a dad who was a great dad, but wasn't necessarily the best husband. Um, so I'm about to give away some spoilers. If you haven't seen Love is Blind season six, you can stop watching now. Or if you don't really care, keep watching. But basically, Clay falls for this girl named A.D. A.D. is a black girl. Um, and so while he's in the pods, of course, you're sharing every little thing about you, your likes, your dislikes. Your goal is to be as vulnerable with that person as you can in order to like fall in love with them. That's the gist of the show. Once you find your person, you literally have to propose to them while you're still in the pods. So you can't even see the person you're proposing to and you don't get to meet until or unless that person says yes. So AD really hit it off with Clay. Clay really hit it off with AD. But one thing Clay shared is this history of the fact that like, he had a really cool, suave, debonair dad. Um, him and his, his dad and his mom stayed married for 24 years, but the marriage did end in divorce. But 24 years is still a long time to be married. But his dad was uh, a serial cheater and committed a lot of infidelity during that marriage. Also to the point where he was taking Clay with him. Listen, his dad was taking Clay with him when he would go visit these women and do his deeds. So Clay knew all this stuff. He's with his dad while his dad is cheating. Yeah, he's got to keep this a secret because he loves his mom and he doesn't want to hurt his mom's feelings and things like that. That within itself is like some weirdo, like grooming. Like, I don't even want to go into detail about that. Just know Clay dad was wild for that. Like, bro, you're taking your kid with you to go smash a woman who ain't your wife? That's a whole nother story for another day. But needless to say, when you're growing up in that kind of environment and with those experiences, it's natural to feel like I, I might just become this person or being fearful that you will become that person when you don't really want to. And that was kind of the plight of Clay's situation on Love is Blind. Um, I kind of felt like he was an insecurity dumpster on AD because... Anytime he shared his insecurities about being faithful and this and that, um, AD will always reassure him, like, I'm going to be here for you. Whatever you need, I got you. Da, 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 da. But it was like you would see a high moment happening with them, and then it would be like, oh, I'm starting to have feelings for you, but I'm scared I'm going to cheat on you in some less of a words. Like, he would say he cares for her, has all these feelings for her, 
and also articulate the fact that like he's still scared that he's going to pull a move like his dad did and end up cheating and ruin a good thing. Um, and so AD and Clay, they did end up, you know, meeting. He proposed, AD said yes. Um, so even on their honeymoon, they went to the Dominican Republic, I think. And while they were there, um, the whole time they're building, they're building, they're building, but he continues to reiterate this situation with his dad. Now, this should have been a red flag for AD, but to me, AD in the show, she kind of talks about the guy she goes for. She kind of falls for the slick talkers, the good looking guy who might have a little drip on him, that kind of stuff. So from the outward persona, Clay is the type of dude she would have fell for out here in these streets. So not even that Clay's a bad guy, but when you're constantly pushing that insecurity onto somebody, if somebody keeps telling me their insecurities, I'm going to reassure you, I'm going to affirm you, but it's like at some point, it's like, look, like we got we to gotta figure this out because if you can't move past this insecurity, then we might not need to keep this thing pushing. But I think AD was just so committed to going through the process of the show and just showing herself on a national stage that she could actually like love and be true to love and commit to loving somebody that she never really looked at things through a realistic lens, if that makes sense. Um, and so the day comes, right? Wedding day. AD goes down the aisle. She looks incredible. Um, and then it's Clay's turn. So Clay walks down the aisle. You could tell he got some nerves. His mom was there to calm him down. His dad actually showed up to talk to him while he was prepping for the wedding. But the conversation wasn't even relationship related. It was more so his dad talking about like, you remember that time I beat you in a foot race type? Like, what does a foot race have to do with your son getting married? Also, the one thing I noticed when his dad walked in the, in the, in the, the clip immediately, his dad was wearing a pin on his blazer at the wedding, and the pin said A-Phi-A. I was so pissed, because as a brother of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, one of our biggest standards is respect of womanhood to the best of our ability, and myself and the alpha men who I'm in relationship, we're married, we're committed, we're family men, so we, there is no thoughts of infidelity and doing all this crazy stuff. So my thought was just like, why bruh have to wear his pen today? It's your son's wedding. I know you're trying to low key show off the fact that you were alpha, but bruh, today ain't that day. It's about your son. And then you want to talk to him about a foot race y'all had when he was 14? Come on, bruh. Maybe not 14, but still, that's the point. But anyway, yeah, so Clay gets down the aisle. They're giving their vows. They're talking about their journey. The preacher gets to the point where he says, hey, A.D., do you take this man? You know the rules. You know how it goes. And she said, I do. When he asked Clay, did he want to commit and say, I do, he had a little disclaimer. And he was like, A.D., you know, I love you. You know, I care about you. But I don't think it would be responsible for me to say yes today. And at that point, like, A.D., I'm pretty sure she felt embarrassed. Her closest family and friends was there. I get it. It's a natural response to the situation. But... I think that moment made, made Clay, in my eyes, the realest person on that show. It's been a lot of dudes who have done some shicey stuff this season, but that made Clay the realest in my eyes. Because number one, Clay was real enough to share his biggest flaw. And while he does have this desire, and I believe he has the capacity to truly love, he knows he hasn't gone through the healing process of that trauma and experience that his dad presented to him that he didn't ask for. Clay didn't ask to hop in the car and ride with his dad while his dad was womanizing. You know what I'm saying? And so um, on the outward appearance, there is a lot of people on social media trying to make Clay the villain like, oh, you knew you didn't want to be with her. Why did you let this go all the way to the wedding day? This is embarrassing. But Clay said something that really stuck out to me. He was like, yo, this was a game time decision for me. Like, I really believe, I genuinely believe he wrestled with himself this whole season because he definitely spoke about how, you know, he wanted to do this, but constantly asking himself, can I be a good husband? And kind of seeking that reassurance from AD. And you know, he brought us some other things that were kind of irrelevant, like finances. He said he didn't talk about finances enough with her and stuff like that. But the bottom line is that AD, that not AD, the bottom line is that Clay 
needed to go through a process. And at the reunion, he went through that process and he's going through it. He shared that he's getting therapy to become a better version of himself, not to live in his dad's shadow, not to fall in his father's footsteps, not to be the man that his dad was, to change that generational curse, to change that generational narrative about men in his family. Um, and so while people want to call him the villain, I think that's the realest, most courageous thing that you can do to have the in emotional intelligence and the maturity to say no, even though the timing might have been trash to say no on the wedding day. The fact that you had the emotional gall and wherewithal to say no, because, you know, it's something in here that ain't right. And, you know, you can't 100 percent honestly commit to being a husband today. That speaks volumes for me. Like Clay won me over then and there. Sometimes we've been in relationships where we still trusted the process, even though we kind of felt like it ain't the right timing or this ain't the right person or I'm not where I want to be. Like all these things come up. Right. But I appreciate Clay so much for being transparent and to hear him in that reunion, which he has the gift of gab. Sometimes it's hard to take what he says as like true honesty, but I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. I know I have the gift of gab too, but I'm very genuine and transparent in my communication. I'm taking what he said at face value, so I'm trusting what he said. And he said he's getting therapy to be a better version of himself. I trust that. But the problem is in culture, not just for black men, but even black women are speaking out, telling black men, go get counseling. You need to talk to people, get therapy. And the moment a black man changes his narrative to do that. He's demonized in this situation. Not generalizing that that's the case with all black men. Some black men are just straight up moving crazy and need that. But the timing of it is what everybody's like villainizing Clay about. Is that fair? Uh, give and take. But at the end of the day, he made the most mature decision out of anybody on that cast. To know yourself well enough to know that while you have the capacity to love somebody, because here's the risk that AD runs. She runs the risk of Clay saying yes at the altar and being a half, you know what, husband, or she can appreciate the fact that he's honest, even though it's embarrassing because he's saying no and you said yes. It doesn't mean, and this was one thing I heard somebody say, like AD said after the fact that like, I'm, I'm never enough. I've never been enough for any guy. Clay's decision to say no is not contingent upon your value. Women have to stop making it about them when a man says no. If a man says no, they probably doing you a favor. So stop thinking less of yourself because a man chose to say no. All he's doing is opening up the door for the right man to come into your life. So no, AD's value had nothing to do with Clay saying no at the altar. But in a sense it did because like Clay knows AD. He values her enough to keep it real. And he was like, I can't be 100% the man you want me to be. Um, and so it, would be ir it wouldn't be responsible for me to say yes right now. You know what I'm saying? So for him to be able to say like, it wouldn't be, res it wasn't a no. It was a, it wouldn't be responsible for me to say yes. He told her, I'm still rocking with you. I want to still build with you. But I guess AD's been through so much in her life with guys that in that episode, she said she wasn't going to deal with him anymore. Apparently, they're still in communications with each other and things like that. So who knows what will happen? But I say all that to say, shouts out to Clay, man. Shouts out to a black man being emotionally intelligent, being mature, making the decision that isn't always the, the right let me rephrase that. Making the decision that isn't always the comfortable decision and sometimes making a decision that makes somebody else look crazy. Because when it boils down to it, all Clay got is Clay. So. Clay, as a North Carolinian, my boy, I appreciate you. I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate your transparency because your timing had been a little bit better. Yes. Um, but yeah, man, I'm glad you're in therapy. I'm glad you're getting the help you need to be the best version of yourself possible. And that's really all we can ask for, man. So my, my kudos to you is just, Hey man, keep doing what you're doing. I hope it's real. I hope it's genuine. I don't want to look foolish posting this. And then it was a game the whole time, 
But I, I'm really taking what you say at face value, man. So from one brother to another, from one black man to another black man, as a black man who's married, who's loyal to his wife, who does everything to make sure his family situation comes first, I want you to get to where I'm at, bro. I want you to feel this feeling I feel every day, waking up beside the woman I love, having a child with the woman I love, building a life together, the ups, the downs, the lefts, the rights, the diagonals, the U-turns, the loop, the loops, everything that encompasses marriage, because it ain't easy. I'm only two years in the game, but me and my wife have been through a lot in two years. And so, you know, we've had to do some work ourselves and we will continue to do work. But Clay, I applaud you, my brother. And these are just my thoughts, man. So with that being said, I'm out, y'all. I hope you like the content. Check out Love is Blind Season 6 if you haven't. It's a good watch. I'm not big into relationship reality shows, love shows, but it was a good watch this year. And I really just watched it because it was in Charlotte. North Carolina love, you know how that go. But don't forget to like, comment your feedback if you've seen Love is Blind, share your perspective about, the, about Clay, send this video to the moon. Um, we just broke over 400 subscribers a couple days ago. That might be a small feat to somebody, but to me it means a lot. So we're on the road to 1K, man. The goal is to get into that monetized space and then start using that monetization to build the brand. So with that being said, I'm out. Just my thoughts, y'all. Peace.